Hello, Grade 3. Welcome to Azul International School's virtual class. Today, we'll be revising your story when Charlie MacButton lost power. So first, let's remind you with what genre is. It is the uh, type of story, the kind of story, whether it's a fiction, non-fiction. This is a narrative poem. It tells a humorous story. Charlie MacButton lost power tells a story that is funny. So while reading, there are events that are supposed to make you laugh. A also, it is a poem. A poem is a writing in which words are in separate lines, often ending in rhyme. So you find words that are rhyming together, having the same sound. Now let's start with the story. Charlie MacButton had likes and like nots. There are things that Charlie MacButton liked and there are things that he didn't like. The things he liked involved handsets. Handsets like these. This is a smart device. This is a handset. A mobile. And there were bots. Bots like robots. Computerized games where he battled bad creatures. These are one of the things that he liked. Computerized games where he fought bad creatures. The things he liked not didn't have blow-up features. The things that he didn't like didn't include the features that he liked. One day, a thunderstorm blew into town. There was a thunderstorm, a storm where there was thunder, lightning, and brought his tech empire tumbling down. His empire, the world of technology that he's living in, has all fell down. Why? Because a lightning bolt struck an electrical tower. See this electrical tower? A lightning bolt like this has hit this tower, which would eventually cause the electricity to cut off. The power went out. There is no electricity. The lights would go off. All these devices that he's working on would shut down. Why? Because there is no electricity. So his tech empire has tumbled down. It fell down. And Charlie McButton? His whole world lost power. There is no power. No electricity. He looked left. He looked right. And his heart filled with dread. His heart was filled with fear. The TV, the lights, and his clock were all dead. Everything was not working. That Everything that needed electricity was not working because it's cut off. It is not there. He jumped to his feet, his lungs gasping for air. His lungs are trying to catch air. He felt like he cannot breathe. The room spun around and he clung to his chair. He held his chair, as you can see here. He tried to cry. So he's very upset, so he cried. Help! He tried to cry, but just managed to squeak. Instead of crying, he, there was a short cry. He let out a short cry that was very quick. The blackout has blacked out his power to speak. The blackout, the darkness that he's in, because there's no electricity, made him not able to speak. Thank goodness his mother had ears like a bat. So his mother could hear his squeak, the short cry that he made. So she had ears that she can hear very well with her ears. That's the expression, the phrase here, had ears like a bat, meaning that she can hear very well, she, so she heard her son. She came to his room and she gave him a pat. See here, she's giving him a pat. She's like, calm down. Oh, Charlie, she said, picking up on his fears, the lights will come back when the bad weather clears. When the bad weather becomes better, the lights will come back. So she's like, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. She told him that you can find something else to play, like read a book, clean your room, sing a song, model clay. So there are other things that Charlie can do. Could anything be any duller than clay? Can there be anything worse than clay? Soggy gray clay on a soggy gray day. It seems that Charlie doesn't like clay. He doesn't like the things that uh, his mother told him to do instead of um, uh, the, his tech empire, the things that he's using. 
He just feels like the clay isn't the thing that he likes to play with. He hated the way the clay gets under, got under his nails and how he could only make snowmen and snails. So see here the clay, he didn't like the idea of playing with clay, it would go under his nails. It would make his nails dirty, right? So he didn't like the idea of soggy clay, meaning wet clay. He dove for a gadget. A gadget is an electronic, small electronic device. He dove out ground last spring. Out ground meaning that he uh, grew older for it. Now he's he, he's a grown up, so he's not playing with his gadget anymore. But because the uh, electricity cut off, so he's looking for something to play with instead. So he looked. So he found this gadget. It was handheld, outdated, not much of a thing. But he clutched the old toy like a lifeline that day. See, it ran on one battery, the size triple A. So uh, it needed a battery with a triple A size. This is the size of the battery. He flicked the on or off switch to on double quick. But no happy humming sound followed the click. So. When he switched the to the on, okay, he tried to make it work, but he didn't hear any sound, a satisfying sound that this gadget is working. He unlatched a hatch and his blood turned to ice. So he unlatched, here he, he tried to unlock, okay, his room. And said the battery is gone from my backup device. So there is no battery in his device. World records were set in the 10 meter dash. What is meant by this sentence is that he ran very fast. He rushed. Okay, so this is a 10 meter dash is a very quick uh, race. So it, what is meant here is that he ran very quickly as a way down the hallway. He flew like a flash, so he ran very quickly like a flash, seeking one battery, looking looking for a battery, just one triple A that would rescue one boy from a gray day of clay. He, he's just looking for a battery so that he wouldn't play with the clay. Remember that he doesn't like wet clay? But just... When his search nearly drove him insane, he ran past the bedroom of Isabel Jane. See here the rhyming words, insane Jane. This is what we mean by home. Home has rhyming words like insane Jane. See, same ending sound. So when he looked for a battery everywhere, he was about to lose hope, but... He, he went past the bedroom of his sister, Isabel Jane. Let's continue. His three-year-old sister was happily walking a doll back and forth. She was walking a, a doll here back and forth, and the doll, it was talking. So he, find, he found his sister playing with a doll that was talking. Let's continue. Now, dolls didn't talk on their own as a rule, so he thought that, of course, dolls do not talk. They needed something to talk. They needed a power source, some kind of fuel that would make it work. In less than a second, he made his decision. So in less than a second, quickly, he thought of something. Call it bad judgment. A real lack of vision. Something that he didn't plan for. He didn't think of it in the right way. Somehow, his, his head didn't warn off his folly. His head didn't warn him of what he was about to do. A foolish act. And Charlie McButton, let's see what he did. He pounced on, him, on that dolly. He plucked out his prize through the baby doll's dress. He took the batteries out of the doll. And Isabel Jane made a sound of distress. As you can see here, she is annoyed, she's sad about what his, her brother did. 
So a sound of distress meaning a sound of pain. Looks like she's very sad. It was just a short walk to the foot of the stair where resided the Mac button time out time chair. It is the chair where he rests, where he takes a rest. To add to the fun of his term, to the add to the time of his term, the, the, the period in the seat, Isabel Jane came to play at his feet. So to add to the fun, Isabel Jane came next to him and started to play. And Isabel Jane, the battery queen, had more triple A's than he'd ever seen. So she started playing next to him, and he was he was in his time out time zone, the, the chair where he takes rest in. His sister came next to him, and she started playing with her stuff, her puppies. They she had batteries, lots of batteries that powered her puppies. They powered her clocks, they powered her talkative alphabet blocks, so she had lots of things. Assaulted by non-stop mechanical chatter, Charlie McButton got madder and madder, so she started working all of these things that she had, her puppets, her uh, alphabetical box, her uh, clocks, so he got really mad because he needed some rest to play with his own stuff. Charlie McButton got madder and madder. He snapped at his sis from his time out time zone. How come you can't ever just leave me alone? So he screamed at her. He told her, why won't you just leave me alone? Leave me play alone. Her eyes filled with tears and she gave them a rub. So she rubbed tears, you can see here her tears. She started crying. She went to the bathroom and hid in the tub. She went to the top of the bathroom, then Charlie McButton felt totally rotten and couldn't help thinking some things he'd forgotten. So he felt bad about what he did to his sister and that he has forgotten some things that he shouldn't be forgetting.